Welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. Where are the other guys? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, other guys. And I'm Chris. <laughs> from, from Long Range, America. The, oh, the best part about the other guys is, isn't that a Will Ferrell movie? Yes, it's Will Ferrell and Marky Mark. <laughs> Mark Wahlberg. I actually watched that like right at the beginning of quarantine because I had nothing better to do. A couple good car chases in it. Instant tangent. Wahlburger is a really good place to eat. Yeah. Is it? Uh, (laughs) it, I will say it gets pricey when you roll in with four kids. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. uh, Doesn't everything. Also true. In all all fairness, the Wahlberg family needs the money. (laughs) (laughs) That's, yeah, they're hurting. That's a solid joke, Ward. <laughs> no, they do. They do. Well they, got, they, got, they got overhead. They do. Yeah, they do have overhead. <laughs> they, got, they got unemployed relatives. And, and Mark uh, literally doesn't have the room in his daily schedule for anything else since he wakes up at 3 and goes to bed at, what, 7.30 every day? Like, yeah, but you see, nuts. Donnie's always been my, my fave. <laughs> Is that New Kids on the Block fame? Or? Say, which no, part no, of the no, funky of bunch are we talking about? Band of Brothers? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Band of Brothers, yeah. <laughs> What was he? he was a sergeant, wasn't he? He was. He was. Yeah. Band of Brothers came out when I was 20, I think, which Saving Private Ryan came out right when I turned 18 and got my uh, selective service card in the mail. And then mm-hmm. literally like the week later, I went and saw that and went, okay, so we need to rethink some options here. Well, <laughs> not, not, not for nothing, but I, I saw that movie at a matinee with a buddy of mine who was a Vietnam uh Marine grunt, and uh, it turns out later that that he wanted to to watch the film with somebody that was not a veteran. So interesting that he could have a driver to go home. He was okay. Okay. But yeah. It, yeah <laughs> uh, Fair. Uh, Private Ryan was was a was a little too realistic. Yeah. It that. Uh, mm-hmm. We've read multiple things recently, actually, about that and about how people are struggling with the, uh, I think, reality and how accurate some of the scenes were kind of come to light as of late. But, yeah, uh, Michael, Michael had a hard tour. Yeah. Yep. Speaking of hard things. That's Jeep. careful. <laughs> careful. Um, the Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 392 debuted today, but everybody had all the information ahead of time because it didn't debut until 11, but all the videos were like, as soon as I woke up, yeah. like, here it is. The embargo lifted at midnight and then Jeep did its official reveal at noon. Yeah. So it that was, was the first thing on my phone this morning. Yeah. It was like over- It's a good thing to wake up to. Yeah. Like that was my Apple news this morning. And Ross and I enjoyed the the reveals. Like intro was very Game of Thronesy. Like it. Was oh my like god! A, it was like an old Will, Willie's Jeep, but it was like Game of Thrones styled intro of a Willie's Jeep. It was kind the of music weird. and the way like it shifted from one scene to another was straight out of the Game of Thrones intro, which I haven't watched Game of Thrones since it ended, and now I have to watch it again. Thanks, guys. So, so not for nothing, but I am a spoiled only child. So, did they happen to mention if our tank would fit? Uh, <laughs> I I hadn't gotten there yet, but it was on my oh, list of yeah, topics. We would like to <laughs> touch on that. Yeah, no, it's always on the top of ours. Because because Ross and I actually traded texts about that today. Because yep. he was like, "They're not going to put it in the two door," and I was like, "The two door has a seventeen gallon tank. <laughs> yep, three three ninety two V eight with a seventeen seventeen and a half gallon right. tank. So the yeah, seventeen here, gallon here, tank. Yeah, with- here's good news. Here's good news. We got a twelve gallon auxiliary on the way." For the two-door? For the two-door, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. sweet. Pulls so back that... seats out, right? No, no, no. Oh, with the back seats? Oh, wow. yeah, you know, it goes yeah. underneath. goes underneath. Really? Okay. Yeah. Um, that will help with the 10 miles per gallon that this thing will get. <laughs> well, it was like 0 to 60 in 4.5 seconds. Like, I don't yes. need an SUV to do that. So, um, so not, not for nothing, one of, our, one of our clients that we can't talk about does... does <laughs> major major upgrades including hellcat motors in okay Wranglers. so and bulletproof so glass and yeah there's always there's, there's always you know there's always another place to go <sighs> fair 
there, there is another, but, but like 470 horsepower, 470, I can't remember to say pound feet or foot pounds right now. Uh, my brain just quit. Just pick one. <laughs> just pick one and go with it because <laughs> foot the, the next, uh, the next automaker will switch it. Uh, so the best is there's always somebody who yells about it on the internet. So it's still a lot. It doesn't matter which way you say it. 470, 470 is a lot. But a thousand is more. But a thousand is more. <laughs> and so we wait on the electric Wrangler, the all electric Wrangler, which we know will happen. And then it'll be, you know. Well, that was the, uh, I, I saw a lot of the, the pushback I saw was like, I thought Jeep was supposed to be kind of the eco-friendly brand. But I was like, they just, they literally just did the 4XE. Oh. What was that? That was supposed to be New York Auto Show that got canceled. But yeah, like, that was supposed to be its big reveal. It of the just, plug-in hybrid. It so I, I wrote something for Hooniverse for the first time in a long time, and uh, and five days ago, the four XE won green car or green SUV of the year, and uh, and today they have the you know three ninety two Wrangler. So, <laughs> is that a real thing? Balance. The, the I'm not joking. I'm, I, yeah, Green Journal announced the four XE is their green SUV of the year. <sighs> I made a point of pointing that out, but yeah, fun juxtaposition. So the only kind of, there were some weird takeaways for it. They, they, it has a hood scoop, but they have a system now called hydro guide that is attached to the hood scoop. That it sounds is, like something you'd use if you grew weed. A hydro guide? Yes. <laughs> Hydroponic farming. Um, yes. <laughs> but it's supposed to separate the water and the air through the hood scoop wow. it allows it to ford two inches more than a regular wrangler than a regular so, wait, 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 wait. So, so is the water's coming in through your hood scoop that that's what they're Presumably. saying is the yeah. the spray over the top this hydro guide is separating the water from the air yeah, not, no, one, no one needs a snorkel anymore what's the exactly. point of the snorkel now? right so it's, it's that that's a hood snorkel that's exactly what yeah. it is, yeah. yeah. Good snorkel. <laughs> so, but that that raises the water fording capability, but only in the 392 to 32 and a half inches. And then Ross and I did a fun game, a brainstorming game earlier. We were like, what's deeper? And we came up with the the Defender. Yep. Is, oh man, I got to get your score back. It was 30. The Defender is 35.4 inches. 35, yeah. And then my, my, my personal favorite is the Rivian R1T and R1S, the fully electrics. They're like 36 inches plus because there's, there's, no, there's no internal – they don't care about air. Like, right. It's at sealed. That, at that point, it's where the door seals are leaking. Yep. <laughs> it's Not fun. that I – to be honest, if you're in three feet of water, especially if it's moving. Yeah, if you're in three feet, in three feet of water, chances are you have other problems to deal with at that point. <laughs> Like, uh, you know, the differentials that probably don't have breathers. So, you know, we've all dealt with this. Which every time I looked it up today, all the Jeep forums were talking about like, well, a good, how, how long can I keep my differential in the water before I have to worry about water in it? Like the only time I've been in water and my differential was under the water, I then changed my gear oil. <laughs> like, right. No, but water fording is a big thing. In any uh, off-roading video that you watch, overlanding video, everyone films water crossings. Because it's the most visually appealing yeah, piece of awesome. overlanding. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're going through four inches of standing water, yeah. like in a parking lot at 30 miles per hour, or like three feet of water crossing a river. It looks awesome yeah, any way cool. you do it. It's a so, big deal. I'm, I'm so happy. that's why everybody runs on it. You know? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm happy to report that our, our new world headquarters has a parking lot that floods. <laughs> so you can so, test so you it. have you have test facility on site yeah yeah no it's, it, it it drains eventually but you know like for about a half a day you get about six inches of water over the far corner of the so did, building or the have, parking did lot i'd have to pay extra i hope not the building no no it's all parking lot the other side. parking lot okay good <laughs> lot. which we're in boise idaho and and it you know in the summer it doesn't rain for 100 days straight so is it that bad jeez they probably don't care days? you know yeah, about 100 days, usually no rain. Oof. 
trying to I'm trying to process that because I lived in Florida for three years where during the summer it literally rains every day. Like it's it, yeah. Well, in Florida it rains when even when the sun is shining. Yes. It depends on what side of the street you're on too. Yeah, right. Totally. <laughs> it's always fun. What's the so, weather? I don't know. Yeah. Ask me in five minutes. That's the that's the northeast joke. What's the weather like? I don't know. Let's circle back. I feel like that's um, everywhere though. It it really is. Like the, the wait five minutes, it'll change is everywhere. Unless you're like San Diego, it's not ever going to change. 65 and sunny. It's still 65 and sunny. All the time. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm sorry, but I, I lived in San Diego and it was boring as hell. Correct. Right? Was that's, it? That's why I left Florida because I get tired of it being sunny and 40 during the winter because I lived, I lived on the West Coast and I wasn't far enough south to have it be like warm all the time. So the temperatures would still get to down, down to like 35. And I'm like, why am I here? It's never going to snow. Like, they <laughs> just didn't cold. stay there, did they? No. I was, in, I was in Pensacola in, in uh, 1997, early 97, and it snowed. And they're like, this is the first time it's ever snowed. And it was just like a little. <laughs> it's right. <laughs> dusting. It's it's dusting. <laughs> yeah. It's like snow. what Boise Izy, Idaho sneezes at. You're like, that's not <laughs> right. That's not snow. Ugh. You guys count that as flurries. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I alluded to it. We, we, we took the family on a day trip. Uh, I will share my screen with you because trying to understand how big this thing is just is hard to process. So Somebody made a, a, a map of the state of Kansas and called it the Kansas Adventure Trail. And it literally follows the rectangle of Kansas, which for you guys out West, we only have 9% public land here. And those are all like state fishing lakes, basically. And I maintain so like, only is in quotes as yeah. us in Connecticut cry into our... So Ross is at like 4%. Like it's public. even smaller. No, it's not even that. I think it's like <laughs> 2.4. What's well, Idaho like? I think it's like 70 public land yeah exactly like once you're west of colorado it's much much higher everywhere um but Don't mind on, me i'll be you know sobbing <laughs> but on this adventure trail uh i i literally i went hunting for one of the water crossings for kind of the reason uh, we talked about earlier like it's the most visually compelling part of it right and i wanted to drive through so anyway we didn't get to the water crossing but we did go to this thing. This thing is called Big Brutus. Uh, for the audio listener, there's a what massive a orange. It's called an electric shovel. Oh. Is basically uh, how they refer to it. There are eight giant treads underneath it. This is my nine-year-old in front of it because, you know, he has to pose with everything. That's an adult woman uh, down there in the background. <laughs> so um, it, it's effectively a giant digger, like a... yeah. An yeah. enormous digger. It's um, an, it's, and it's how I, tall is it? I would call it's it's a hundred and sixty feet tall. So it, it measures in oh, at like shit. fifteen stories. And it's a hybrid. It's electric. It's yes. it was it was electric, <laughs> which is the weirdest part. Um, top speed of 0. 0.22 miles an hour. Mm. And it would. They used it for strip mining in in Kansas. Uh, and what I didn't, I need to pull up the Google Map. Uh, for a piece that I put in the show notes because I was like, where did that not come? I guess my Google map didn't come. Um, when I looked from above, because when I took pictures at the actual place, there's uh, a giant body of water like out in front of it. And I was like, huh, I wonder, I wonder if that had something to do with it. And so the best part is on Google maps, you can see how big it is. <laughs> Because even from above, you can see this giant freaking thing. Um, so there's this body of water right here in front of oh, it. Oh, shit. Well, turns out that's just the strip mine. Mm. That's literally a hole that this thing helped dig. Uh, and what and happened? The water table just flooded into over, the strip mine? Over time, it's filled in with like rain and everything. It, it wasn't going to oh. continue to evaporate. Oh, but like. Cool. When yeah, you, you look at out, you can see where it's been. All That's of Cherokee wild. County oh, is, and actually it has strip pit state wildlife management area because these are all strip mines. Wow. Mm. All down here through Cherokee County. But the reason that this thing is in this basically field up against this body of water right now 
is because they got to the point and they were like, hey, guess what? Uh, it's no longer cost effective to use this thing. So just leave we're just going to leave it here. Dump it. Yeah. And they, they just stopped and they left it there. <laughs> Decommissioned and then pulled out all of the things that allow it to operate. So it. And it let's op- make a park out of it. Correct. Uh, yeah, pretty much. So it cost $6.5 million in 1962. So $56 million today to buy one of these things. It is not the biggest of its kind. Uh, there's one that was called the what? Captain, which was three times larger. What the? Oh, I have to look it up. This what one they weighed by? 11 million pounds, and that one, and so, but of that part of that was ballast, and so the Captain was 27 million pounds of just equipment. Oh my God! It looks like something out of Star Wars. <laughs> the Captain does. Yeah. Yeah, they all look really kind of crazy. Chris, what were they strip mining for? Did, did you say? Coal. Coal. So, and the best part was like, this thing didn't even mine the coal. It moved all of the yeah. earth out of the way. So they could get to the coal. So they could, yeah. And it would, it only, it would, I'm going to say it only, it would dig 20 feet to 69 feet. That was like the depth of the boom. Mm-hmm. And that's as far as it, it could go down kind of thing. <clears throat> The crazy part that I found on the uh, the like about page is like there are there's a staircase to the top of the boom, and in inside this thing there is um, a sign that like points at the boom, and you're like okay, um, but then there's also a sign there that says closed due to insurance. Uh. <laughs> so. This this main section here would be the main hoist cables would be going in and out through there. They would go up and out that way. And then the door to the boom was like over here. That's wild. So it was, and and I didn't really expect to be electric. Like I kept mm. looking for an engine. I'm assuming mm-hmm. they stripped the generator engines out when they, when they kind of uh, took everything of value out of it. But I mean, it, it would have been cool if it ran on coal. <laughs> <laughs> it's just feeding itself. Just like just throw it in, scooping yeah. it up. Like, hey, this in. scoop needs to go here. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, and like yeah. the more yeah. I imagined it, like in use, I always imagined stuff like this with like big, billowing clouds of smoke coming out of them as they're right. mining everything else. Or right? it's it was, reserved for the coal. Yeah. I mean, the smoke where comes does it, after at yeah, the end of the process. Do you need a certain gauge rated extension cord for that thing when you're driving it around? Like yes. 12. Yes, you do. 12. Yeah. 14 is not good. Well, considering That's it good. only moves at 0. 0.22 miles an hour, like. <laughs> good God. They probably didn't imagine. show, they didn't want to show everyone the coal fired power plant that it, it kind of moved with it. So that <laughs> literally was right <laughs> behind it. <laughs> yeah. Worst Tesla ever. Yeah, exactly. So we, we had room to take a picture in the bucket. Wow. That was. That, the weirdest part was just how how big it was. It was, yeah. So at one of the places we go off-roading, this place, Anthracite Off-Road in Pennsylvania, they have one of those buckets on the entrance trail to the park. And it's big enough that people, like the photo op of the place is you back your truck into the, the bucket. bucket. <laughs> yeah. And it's funny because some people, you know, like a two door standard with JK, you can still open the door and like climb out and like oh, walk absolutely. out. But there was a guy on like, you know, full with like Dana sixties and he had to like climb over his windshield to get out because he couldn't open the door. It was pretty funny. I, I would say this bucket is big enough that you It'd be tight, but you could probably get two JKs in there next to each other. Holy sh! It it like, was huge. I like the Wikipedia page because it's got a picture of a van and a car next to the tracks, and you could literally like fit the car inside the tracks. Yeah, it it was just it's so big. It's a Ford Windstar or a Ford Aerostar van. That's awesome. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And like a Buick old school yeah the uh they they do have something on the about page of the actual like website there's like hey we're raising money to paint it the the quote we got was two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to paint it so (laughs) oh my god we're just gonna try and buy the paint and do it all ourselves you just (laughs) see the farmers out there with battle cans you know they're like ah, prayer 
just oh. imply local children. It was what? it was ginormous. So anyway, it it distracted the kids for a day. Awesome. We didn't touch any. I mean, we touched stuff. There was hand sanitizer around. We and weirdly, it, or not weirdly, um, fortuitously, it was kind of cold and windy. So keeping your mask on actually was like. It does help. Have your face warm. Like there was an added benefit. Like I had my stocking hat and my mask. <laughs> yeah, it does actually weirdly help keep you warm. Kind of nice. Ross, what you the beard. <laughs> the beard also <laughs> helps quite a lot. Um, I went up to our local ATV club on Saturday. I took my wife with us. It was her second time on an ATV trip uh, since we met, which uh, the the first time was in 2000, I think, 14. So it's been a while. Is, um, is this – the time you broke it was the time you were just driving around the yard, right? Which time that I broke it? <laughs> you told a story oh, before yeah, yeah, where yeah, yeah. Sam got on with you and uh-huh. then immediately the quad broke. That was in my parents' front yard, like yeah, exactly. literally okay. on the grass in front of their house. No, she came with us this time. She rode shotgun in my dad's Polaris Razor. Um, he's got full like four point harnesses and everything. And she actually had a really good time. It was chilly. Um, you know, they wore masks and helmets and everything in the side by side together just to have just in case, just, just for uh, redundancy, if nothing else, but it was a good trip. It was the most uneventful day of off-roading ever. Um, I had one almost oopsie and otherwise there were no problems. Um, we had, unbelievable rain last week in the northeast and it's not the, like there was a hurricane going by or it, something not like anything like that. no that didn't happen but it there happened. were so the place this atv club it's like private land um it's because usually it's yeah <laughs> it's part of that well it's private so it's not public uh, <laughs> but it it's usually muddy there even when it's dry everywhere else and after all the rain, it was, it was, I've been riding quads for 15 years, more, actually more than that. And this was probably in the top five muddiest trips I've ever been on. Um, went over the seat in the mud twice. As so, in like the quad stopped in the mud and you kept going? No, as in it was. Oh, the mud. No, no, back. no, not over the bars. God, no, no, that would have been so <laughs> unfortunate. No, like the mud in the water and the mud. Crested went. the seat. Um, like, you know, not bow wave, just like you go down and the, and it floods over. Is there so, special pants for that? I wear very high coveralls. <laughs> I wear like, I wear high top Timberlands and, and, you know, like the heavy duty thick coveralls. Is there a and, photo of that that we can see? <laughs> uh, no, a photo of me in the coveralls. Yes. But not a photo of me in the mud pit. We definitely oh, have it. pictures of Ross and mud. So, so oh, I got to ask, as a connoisseur of mud, um, sure. <laughs> what viscosity were you running? What, what? The viscosity. Uh, what the, oil viscosity? No, no, the mud viscosity. Mud, mud. Oh, mud. How thick was it? <laughs> uh, the, the, it, it? Reasonably light. I'd say not quite soup, but a little bit less. Um, yeah, I've been told to avoid the really bad mud pits at this place because they extract vehicles with uh you know with jeeps and we're talking about like 800 pound quads so not quite as bad as that place anthracite where they extract quads and side by sides with unimogs so that that's a little a little worse but the mud at this place is is actually it's pretty thin which is nice um but it, it's actually, it's pretty, I mean, high elevation in the state of New York is relative, but it's, it's pretty high. So <laughs> it, it tends to be pretty thin mud. I still and need to drive a Unimog. Uh, same. Yeah. Anybody knows anybody with a Unimog, holler. Maybe we can get Ward to buy one. Ooh. No. Hey, Ward, Ward how do you feel Ward, about buying Ward already knows what he wants again to offer. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Laugh if you will, Chris. <laughs> Laugh if you will. But I found a screaming deal in the UK. For a Unimog? Left-hand drive Unimog, yeah. Oh, pull the trigger then. I, I'm, yeah. I'm a full enabler of bad decisions. <laughs> I mean, great decisions. It, it was a... Uh, I didn't know if he was talking to me or you. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Which Chris or... I mean, it, 
very, different very names to say that. Uh, German um, army uh, uh, ambulance. So it's a big box. Ambulance on Unimog. Dude, I love it. Uh, and I'm in. What's holding you up from doing it? <laughs> uh, my wife. That's uh huh. Can't argue that. We I, I prefer missing? to call it the accountant. The accountant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the uh the so I write for this other website, Everyday Driver, and the joke is that the wife is quote unquote the minister of finance. Yes. Oh, that's great. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, that's a good title. That's a promotion over the accountant. It, yeah, a little step up. <laughs> well, unless you watch the movie The Accountant, then you you know then you know like you could. It's more. Is that more the one? That- that's that been about... Affleck with a high-powered rifle, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wasn't that supposed to be on Staten Island? I don't think it was a good movie. I'm just. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's... we don't. We don't have to look up the Rotten Tomato I reviews. Wouldn't, on I that. wouldn't. I wouldn't bother. Hey, I, I did so. find a picture of Ross in the mud. Ooh. The the old pictures Which that one? exist on on Google Drives, Ross. <laughs> <laughs> that is. Uh, that was. I think the first or second ride on that quad, actually. Wait, Ross, one? how tall are you? I am short. I'm like 5'9". I, well, I was 5'10", and then I had back surgery. So, uh, I, I, yet since been, you know, unmeasured. So let's, Still uh, average. Let's call it average, yeah. <laughs> You're average. That's good height. Yeah. I, no, I, I think I lost like an inch when I had part of my you, spine. You can, you can ride like roller coasters and stuff, and you fit normally. You Dude, can drive Miatas, like – I can I fit in every car without a problem. Yeah. I can't get into every lifted truck without a problem, but I fit in everything without a He's problem. He's gonna fit in Ward's UMOG pretty good. Mm. It's gonna be an issue. Just got a ladder. It's got a ladder. ladder. Yeah, yeah he just can. A running and jump. It's fun. A hydraulic lift for the spare. <laughs> I've I've been enamored with Unimogs for like for re- like since I first learned of them. Like the fact that they have multiple speeds in reverse because they used to work in rail yards like the, mm-hmm. the the amount of engineering and thought that went into those trucks is just insane so what are in your current fleets at the moment <laughs> well, ward's about to get a unimog ward's about to buy yeah what else oh, what no, do you no, no, no. I, I i i suppress the urge <laughs> so what what else do you own and toy with well, Chris, Chris has the the ultimate collector's vehicle. Ooh, oh, which Chris? Just not, not me. I sold <laughs> mine. <laughs> I, I know, Chris. Yeah, I have. Yeah, I have. I have, I have, I have a. The forty-seven is a is an icon. I have, I have a forty-seven CJ two A. Um, currently uh-huh. not driving anywhere, which has my wife extremely happy. <laughs> Taking up the third stall in the garage. Um, mm-hmm. Doing an electrical conversion on it from six volt to twelve. So it's just cool. kind of a process. Does it look like that? Uh, yeah, mine's actually it's all gray. Okay. And uh, has a black, but yeah, pretty much the same. That's the, the, cool. the the glory of the the visual listener. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they get the the color coding. Right. It's uh, it's still gray. Yeah. Oh, very cool. Yeah, it's great. But, you know, to throw it back to Ward, he's he's going to have a, a really cool vehicle here pretty soon that's coming. Unimog? <laughs> no, oh, was, that's right. It's a 90, 90, 1991, um, uh, well, it's our, it's our um, firm um, sort of pimp mobile. It's a 91 Land Cruiser 77 series. Oh, um, diesel. Come, uh, coming yeah. from the Canary Islands. Really? How did you happen and, upon that? And the ultimate is it's actually a left-hand drive, not a right-hand drive. So us Americans will be fine. So that's, how did you find That's going to make my Googling and, harder. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's the story behind this? Because go that, to, that is to, not common. Go to, uh, just, just take your browser to canaryislandrover.com. Okay. Is my bank account going to punch me in the face? No, no, these are no. Cheap. This is this is this is a great no, story. I'll be quiet. Very, very reasonably played. And uh, so Adam, our our friend in Tenerife, is a U.S. expat who uh, fell in love with a young lady who was a who was a Canary Islander, and uh, 
uh, wise man that he that he was, he he chose uh, l love over politics, and uh, and uh, uh, does it have brown stripes? It does. It does. Oh my gosh, Ross, it is amazing. Oh no. I just bought a truck. I can't buy another. No, no, I'm not <laughs> telling you to buy another one. I'm just telling you to be in awe of theirs. You can come like, drive this one. That's it. Uh, that's actually the truck. That's, is it really? That's the exact truck. Those that's, stripes that the truck. are amazing. So you said left-hand drive, right? Left-hand drive, turbo diesel, four-cylinder. Manual, it. automatic. Five-speed. Oh, oh, this thing's going to be so great. That is It'll like get you about 25 miles to the gallon. It'll do 70 miles an hour. And as long as you don't confuse it with a 4.2 liter heavy duty six cylinder Land Cruiser motor, you'll do just fine. Oh, that's amazing. Those, those seats are fantastic. Like the stripes on the seats, even the turbo stitching. So that's on its way. It departed Tenerife yesterday. Oh man. Congratulations in advance. That is amazing. It's on a, it's on a row row to uh, Amsterdam and then it'll get on a, a bigger row row and uh, <laughs> we'll row 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 our boat to Seattle um, offloading uh, first week of January. That's, that is awesome. All the way That's to a hell Seattle. of a way to kick off the new year. Holy shit. Well, well and we already ordered fuel we needed tank. A, uh, we needed a uh, demo show truck and uh, uh, we, a after a lot of years and a lot of vehicles um, uh, I knew I didn't want another right hand drive and uh, mm. uh, we, we just wanted something that would be a, a little uh, little unique and mm. uh, so we sell fuel tanks and we sell rear bars or bumpers uh, as Americans call them and this one actually has kind of a, a, a ugly <clears throat> bumper, and uh, uh, so we're gonna we're gonna gear it up a little bit and uh, are those use it for shows and what have you. Well, what is in the rear bumper? Are those just brake lights, or are they reverse yeah. lights too? They're yeah. ugly brake lights. All of the above, yeah. All Turn signals. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think those wheels were also on the second gen Forerunner. They look very similar, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. early '90s uh, Land Cruisers yeah. and Forerunner yeah. shared. I, yeah, so I, I had a set off of a Forerunner on a '75 uh, series flatbed that I had. Hmm. Nice, yeah, so nice. that'll get a okay. that'll get a fuel tank, uh, LRA fuel tank, and then a Kmar rear bumper on it when it gets here. We we have other other friends that are donating some goodies to to help Ooh. finish. Nice. <laughs> So we, cool. we haven't really touched on what LRA is. <laughs> yeah. So who, who wants to us. go? <laughs> well, Chris is the area diet one. I'm, I'm just sort of um, in the background. Your background? <laughs> <laughs> Ward has the best jokes, as we figured out already. <laughs> yeah. He's got the one-liners for days. Uh, <clears throat> LRA or – so – the difference LRA is who we import from long range automotive is who we buy fuel tanks from. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and they're in Lilydale, Australia and outside of, uh, excuse me, Melbourne. Mm -hmm. Okay. I pronounced it wrong. So I'll probably get in trouble later, but, um, <laughs> Roger and Arnie are the two brothers that own it. They've been at it for over 30 years Ward. Yes. And they've been at it for over 30 wow. They're pros. They're absolute pros in everything that they do. And so we import their fuel tanks from them. Um, and we import from Kmar, who is some of their really good friends just down the road. Um, and those are, that's our two main uh, product lines right now that we have. Mm -hmm. And it's all Toyota or you guys have uh, branched out of it? Uh, no, no, no. Toyota, Jeep, Dodge. Okay. What am I missing, Ward? Mercedes Sprinters. Mercedes uh, Sprinters. Nissan, that's a big one. Uh, oh, wow. We have uh, so so we have we have we have friends that are a little different and uh, uh, Mitsubishi Delicas and Pajeros are are quite popular. Um, they you are on a micro expedition vehicle. A, a Delica L four hundred is just a badass little four by four. Delicas are becoming a thing in the states. Well, funny thing is, we know where to get 
four wheel drive diesels, uh, long and short wheelbase in left hand drive. Really? Is that, is that back to that website we might've been on a little bit ago? Yep. <laughs> well, Noted I, for future reference. Yeah, no, I, I, I mock, I, I mock, um, uh, right hand drive vehicles because, uh, I can't, I can't comfortably drive one because I'm, 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 um, I always keep trying to turn on the windshield wipers when I'm intending to turn. And yes, you can refit and do all that stuff. But uh, back of the matter is my, my wife really doesn't like riding in the passenger seat of a right-hand drive vehicle. It's understandable. In the U.S. anyway. So, um, yeah. So there's, there's also kind of a price premium for, mm -hmm. for a discount, depending on how you look at it. For, right for left hand. and right hand, yeah. Personal preference. Understandable. Very cool. See, it's it's really hard to find pictures of them. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. Because they're all underneath. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the fuel tanks. Yeah, I'm trying to. I'm scrolling through Instagram. I'm so like, what's I your find something to share? <laughs> what's your biggest market? What do you tend to move the most of? What's your most popular vehicle and automotive? I guess demographic is right phrase for it um well there's there's historical there's current trends and then there's the future and uh mm -hmm. you know we, we kind of we've been doing this for about in one form or another about four years and uh, that followed a, a, the 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 prior business which was more in the area of repair kits and drivetrain products mm -hmm. um so, you know, we, we, we came from the Toyota off-road world because that's what people in this country have been buying from LRA for the last 20 years. Um, but once we got the Jeeps coming in, Chris has done a bang up job of, of spreading the word. And, and I'm at a point where I really don't do anything anymore. Um, <laughs> what you've got on screen there is a photo of uh, a coffin uh, or, or a uh, Mercedes Sprinter, depending on- Holy shit. Are you saying you can move bodies in there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gasoline so don't do this. Do yes. But they don't care because they're dead. Um, advised. That's a forty-six gallon uh, Mercedes uh, tank. What's the right, what was the, the stock? Twenty-four gallon. Twenty-four original mm. equipment. That's a pretty graphic example of why people send us money. <laughs> <laughs> and that retains like all fuel gauge function and everything right. right yeah most of it yeah most of um, it. Yeah. <laughs> retains the body carrying capabilities yeah yeah so, I think what, so, what you lose sometimes is you lose the uh the miles to empty function the range um yeah when it tells you the range um but you know most most vehicles that's significantly off anyways um, so my dad on his prior silverado he had a duramax silverado and he he changed out 23 gallon OEM fuel tank, which was comically small for a 57 mm -hmm. gallon. Uh, I can't, I think it was a Titan tank was the name yeah, of the brand. Probably. And the miles to empty was never accurate, but the theoretical right. range was like a thousand miles and it, right. it changed the truck completely. Some of the, some of the car manufacturers will allow you to f fool with their code. And, mm -hmm. and kind of trick the computer into thinking what you want. But we've, we've come across some of them, and I, I'll leave the names out, that <clears throat> are absolutely not going to let you touch it. Does it rhyme with <laughs> Mopar? <laughs> no, 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 no. no. Okay. no. Really? Huh. No, I mean, you because that's, you know, a lot of the American-made stuff, it's, it's uh, the coding there. The, uh, people do tuners. And mm -hmm. if they allow people to get in there and mess with a tuner, or, you know, or do something like that, then you can change all that code. It's not that difficult once you have the program. Hmm. Um, it would be more your foreign manufacturers that are kind of like stale. Really? Interesting. It seems in the speed side of things, the like the streetcar side of things, that FCA has been the most difficult to crack. So I guess, interesting. It's a, I took a stab. I was wrong. Yeah, <laughs> yeah same. <laughs> so yeah, like as War was saying, you know, people, even this year, people have really built a lot of 60 series land cruisers 80s we've sold a lot of hundreds this year and then kind of the new wave is the jeeps mm -hmm. um you know 
as you were talking, alluded to earlier with the new Jeep, huge motor, small fuel tank. So most of the Jeeps, we can double the fuel capacity on them with a really nice tank that actually fits in front of the um, rear axle on the driver's mm -hmm. side because the main tank usually sits on the passenger side on those. Um, so we Ooh, can double the capacity. I found a JK one. <laughs> <laughs> on JK, JL. There you go. Oh, wow. <laughs> so what, what are they made of? Is It looks like aluminum. It's, but I yeah, can't it's, it it's aluminized steel. Um, it's, it's two millimeters thick wow. steel. So um, in fact, a uh, little plug for Turtleback Trailers. We just did a tank in Ken Bruce, who's one of the, one of the leaders of Turtleback Trailer in his JK. And, and if you're looking <laughs> on Instagram, his Instagram is wandering Rubicon. But that's familiar. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. He's that's got a good cool. following. But they did a whole video of the whole thing of the install in the JK. So it's pretty cool. It's, you know, it's such a weird world where we have simultaneously Jeep talking about installing solar panels and like solar chargers on the, you know, like in Moab mm -hmm. on the trails. And also we have overlanders looking for large capacity auxiliary tanks, but I'm, I don't know. Uh, I don't think that, is there any downside of adding supplemental fuel capacity? I mean, obviously like marginal weight increase, but have you, I mean, yeah. it doesn't, more likely to not provide any decrease in like ground clearance. It doesn't change the way the vehicle operates. There's really no negative, right? There's really no negative. And the huge positive that I, one of the things I take away, it's, I mean, obviously we always talk about safety and ability mm -hmm. to get out of wherever you are by having enough fuel, not running out. But a lot of the overlanders that I talk to, especially the ones that are videoing a lot and trying to video and get all the cool shots and everything, They'll zoom down trails and they'll run out of fuel and then they have to run out to get fuel and then go back into camp. And it's like, well, mm -hmm. why are you doing that? Just carry more fuel. Right. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's Eliminate do it the safely. variable from yeah. the get go. So actually we're selling fuel carrying capacity, but we're actually saving gas. <laughs> like, kind of. I like that. But, yeah. Yeah. That is, that is kind of nuts. So it's, you know, it's, it's about safety and, and I think that's a big part of what long range America is really about is, is how do we do stuff that's, you know, how do we equip customers to go out and do stuff that's safe sure. and, and suits their needs. And obviously we're not forcing people to buy tanks. We're, we're right. talking and to them. And, and one of the key things about off-roading after you've done it enough to have had a lot of uh, debacles is yeah. the nice way to put it is just peace of mind you know like yeah complete. being able to focus on what you're doing and where you're going and who you're with and the off-roading itself mm -hmm. and not having to think about all that other bullshit in the background is it's i mean it's the reason that yeah. i started carrying you know auxiliary fuel on the quad so you don't make tanks for that you know, a lot of a lot of people um um really kind of go overboard for the bling um absolutely true yeah you, know, you know i've got 37s and well screw you i've got 40s um <laughs> sorry know, it, 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 <laughs> and uh, the uh i was talking to a trainer he's he's a great guy from north of the border that uh his his his, his business is training uh commercial fleet operators uh power utility uh, uh, companies, um, uh, folks uh, from, the, from the federal and provincial governments that, that have fleets of uh, backwoods law enforcement professionals, game, fish and game, mm -hmm. forestry types, uh, commissioned law enforcement officers. Yeah, they're driving Ford Super Duties and Duramax Chevys and you know, they get stuck. And, you know, he, he spends a lot of time teaching them how to use their vehicles to, you know, be able to go home at the end of the shift without taking a very long walk. And, uh, you know, they do just fine with, with stock vehicles with four-wheel drive. And, and with a modern vehicle, 
you know, with traction control and, and the other features, you know, you really don't have to go buggy with, with, uh, with you know, big dollar upgrades. Um, and for a lot of folks that, that are actually knowledgeable about backwoods operations from a, from a, a search and rescue, law enforcement, military uh, perspective, um, you know, a very large percentage of our, our customer base are active retired military law enforcement or search and rescue. And, and they know that, you know, fuel, fuel is along with a, a jack and a shovel and some common sense and a little bit of experience, a pretty good toolkit to make it back in one piece. So we don't really compete with our other tank manufacturers. We, we don't really view ourselves as competing with anybody. It's, it's kind of a unique offering for our, for our vehicle mix. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, we have people say, well, should I, you know, should I, you know, should I uh, upgrade my suspension or should I buy a tank? And I'm, I'm going, well, you know, when was the last time that your suspension didn't work? Did you ever run out of suspension? <laughs> right. 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 Um, When's the last time you didn't it's a have a very extreme suspension. circumstance? Yeah. yeah. It, it, and they go, well, you know, I, I, someday I might want to uh, do the Rubicon. Okay. Well, you know. Someday. Okay. You know, um, good on you. Um, right. Aspirations and reality are not doing the same usually. Yeah. It's uh, like, the off road community is full of FOMO, right? I mean, that's an older 100%. term now, but it's completely full of FOMO. It's, there, we need to coin a new term for FOMO on Instagram <laughs> for, you know, the likes you could have gotten if you had yeah. the such and such equipment. Right. I didn't have the right rooftop tent. <laughs> well, Nobody likes that so, one. So the, the, the classic examples when somebody calls us up and says, hey, I'm doing a SEMA build and I'd really like to have one of your tanks on my rig. Why? Well, it's just going to sit in a showroom. It'd be really cool. I said, and nobody's well, going to see it. I yeah. think you're going to run out of gas at the SEMA convention. Well, no, no, no. no. You know, I, it's, a, it's a badass build. I'm going to go, okay, well, tell me, are you going to like you know, tilt it 45 degrees with a spotlight <laughs> right. on our tank? Or? Well, no, you, more likely than not, they're going to run out of gas because they put 3,000 pounds worth of shit on a 4,000 pound vehicle. Well, yeah. So, so anyway, I guess you know we're 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 somewhat jaded in the the um, it's not going to get you laid, right? It's, <laughs> it's not it's not an accessory that you know you're hanging out. I thought big right back and back sides were in pop were popular now. <laughs> comes over in, in a you know a tank top and short shorts and says, "God damn, you got some fine wheels on you, dude." Uh, yeah, it, it's 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 just a box with fuel in it. <laughs> um, it, it's not very sexy in fact i can't even understand why you guys are talking to us it's, <laughs> I, it's, because i think it's one of the of the most uh essential upgrades like i my 80 series was very limited like i think i only ever got like 200 i think the most i ever let it go was 272 miles on one tank because it's an old truck. I didn't want to get too low into a gas tank. Right. Um, and I just start, saw the flicker of the fuel warning light at 272 miles. Well, th this, is, this, is, this is where Chris would say, well, how would you like to have 79 gallons of fuel on board? I, I would absolutely love it, except I sold a yeah. truck like two weeks ago. <laughs> well, yeah, 79? Uh, 79. Because there's what? a replacement and an auxiliary. Yeah. So on the 80 series, you can put a 37 main tank replacement in and you can do a 42 gallon auxiliary. But you got to throw the But uh, then you need spare. springs and a bunch yeah. of other stuff too. <laughs> say, 80, how much is 80 gallons of fuel weigh? It gas fuels what? Eight pounds a gallon? I think there's, there's a guy on Instagram. I think his, his uh, Instagram handle is Gray Whale Cruiser. And he's got the 100 series and he's got the 40 gallon main and a 40 gallon ox. So he's got 80 gallons. Jesus. And he told me the other day when I talked to him, he can go almost 1,200 miles. And is he like trying to, you know, yeah, transverse just, the world or anything? Yeah, or is doesn't want to have to stop to get gas. So I think he lives, I think he lives in a border <laughs> town between two states and mm -hmm. we won't name the states. But <laughs> he lives in a border town between two states. And in one state, the fuel is very, very cheap and just across the border where he lives, it's like twice as much. 
So he goes Twice 40 miles, Twice? gets his gas, and then goes back home. How ex- how expensive is fuel where you guys are? Just that sounds some like Nevada, curiosity. California type stuff. Because I just filled up for a dollar ninety seven the other day, and it was like, oh. like two two sixty nine, I think, for premium. I got premium okay. today. Yeah, that's about. What we oh wow, you guys have really expensive. We've got, we've got people that swear that they paid for their tanks with gas or fuel savings. Yeah, mm. you just got to work the system. Yep. Mm. Very cool. Very, very cool. Oh, gas went back up around me. <laughs> oh. I filled up the other day for a dollar sixty-six. So, <laughs> oh my god, Costco gas. Uh, gotta be. It was a magic, a magical place called Quick Trip that we only really get to experience here in the Midwest. But uh, what's it called? Quick Trip. Oh, Quick Trip. I think, Not so. I think my, 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 my.